Well, hello and welcome to Math Blossoms, where growing in mathematics is natural. I'm your teacher, Miss G, and we're going to learn about the topic of rational and irrational numbers today. Let's get started. All right, um, our main screen here is going to have the definition of a rational and an irrational number. So let's go over those first. Rational numbers are numbers that you can turn into a fraction. And I don't mean an approximate fraction that's close to the value of that number. I mean an exact fraction. So for instance, if I had the, the number 0 0.5, I could turn that into the fraction of 1 half and they would be equivalent fractions, right? So those are just normal rational numbers. Rational is a word that means that things make sense right? So most of your numbers are rational. However, there are some irrational numbers out there that we need to be very familiar with. And the definition of an irrational number is a number that you cannot turn into a fraction. You can get close, like you could round an irrational number to the nearest tenth or something, and then get a fraction that's close to that. But you cannot exactly get um, the exact value of that number. A good example of an irrational number that we can talk about is pi. So if you have the value of pi, uh, you were probably told by a previous teacher before you got into eighth grade that pi is, a, is about equal to uh, or approximately equal to 3.14, okay? But that's not the true value of pi. That's a rounded answer or an approximate answer. So anytime you round that decimal, uh, you are actually giving an approximation of the value of pi. Because we know that the value of pi is a decimal that goes on and on and on and on. And usually they'll indicate that with like three dots to let you know that that decimal does not end. It just goes on forever, right? So that's why it's kind of impossible to turn it into an exact fraction. Um, or you can't really write the exact decimal down either. It's going to keep going, right? Um, so there are some things you need to know about um, how to recognize these irrational strange numbers because pi is pretty easy to recognize. We use a symbol for that. Um, so the question you should be asking is, how do I know the difference between a rational and an irrational number just by looking at it, right? Not having to, you know, see if it'll be turned into a fraction or not, right? And there's easy ways to do that. Um, so we're going to talk about that next. And um, that is, um, well, this is just more of the same with the definition. Irrational numbers in decimal form are always non-terminating and non-repeating decimals, okay? So non-terminating decimals are decimals, again, like pi, that just kind of go on and on and on and on and they never end. That's why they're called non-terminating, okay? If the decimal ended, like in our example that I was mentioning early, zero, 0 0.5. 0.5 is a terminating decimal. It ends, right? And it's exactly equal to one half. Okay. Um, and that is rational. So this would be an example of a rational number because rational numbers in decimal form will, will most of the time end. Not every time but most of the time they will end. If it's a repeating decimal, however, that goes on forever, that is also rational, okay? Not irrational, but rational, right? So how do we know that in decimal form it's gonna go on and on and on and on? And there's ways you could just look at a number and say, oh, that's rational, or oh, that's irrational. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. But remember that all rational, sorry, all irrational, irrational numbers are going to be non-terminating and non-repeating decimals if you convert it into a decimal form of that quantity. Um, again, just a recap of what decimal uh, types of decimals that we have. Terminating decimals are decimals that end. Repeating decimals usually have a bar on the top of it 
<clears throat> and the bar tells you which digits are repeating. So this 0 0.36 with the bar over it really means 0 0.36363636366, you know, and it just keeps going and going and going. Now you would think that repeating decimals would be irrational, but that's actually not the case. Repeating decimals can actually be converted into exact fractions. In fact, this 411th here is exactly the value 0 0.36 repeating. So this is actually in the rational category, okay? So if you break it down, decimal numbers can be in two categories, terminating, all the terminating or ending decimals, right, are rational. So if you get a decimal or a fraction that turns into a decimal that ends, it's rational, okay? or just getting a fraction is usually rational, unless there's an irrational number inside of the fraction, like pi or something, which is rare, but um, that could happen, I suppose. Non-terminating decimals have two categories though. You've got repeating and non-repeating. So for it to, for your number to be irrational, it has to be both non-terminating and non-repeating, okay? Because if it's repeating, it's rational right? So we're trying to figure out which numbers are non-terminating, non-repeating. And you can break it down to three. And if you know those three irrational kinds of numbers, then you just have to know that the rest of them are rational, right? So here's how you can break that down. There are three kinds of numbers you may see visually that are non-terminating and non-repeating when converted into decimal form. The first one, it's just a normal non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So if you have a decimal like 7.3481 dot, 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 you can see that's not repeating. There's no repeating bar. Also, the dot, dot, dot tells you it goes on forever, right? So that would be a, you know, an irrational number because it's non-repeating and non-terminating. Another one is pi. We already talked about pi, but pi in decimal form is a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal. And the third type is probably the hardest one to identify for your age group, but it gets easier after I explain it a little bit. And that is non-perfect square roots, okay? So if you have a non-perfect square root, uh, those always convert down into non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. So all three of these types of numbers are irrational, okay? Um, and so if you can find those, then you will know that the rest of the numbers are just rational, okay? Um, here's how you can tell if a square root um, is perfect or non-perfect, right? So first of all, let's review what a square is and what a square root is. You may have had this in a previous grade level, but we're just gonna review it really quickly. They are opposites. Squares and square roots are, are opposites of each other. So if I were to square, let's pick a number. We'll, we'll pick number seven here. If I were to square a seven, that just means to take two sevens and multiply them together, okay? Whatever the exponent is, that's how many sevens you should have. If I had seven to the third power, I would have three sevens that I multiply together. If it's seven to the fourth power, I'd have four sevens that I'm multiplying together, right? Well, I'm just talking about squares right now. So that just two sevens and two sevens multiplied together is 49. So seven squared is equal to 49, okay? The opposite of that is when we take the square root of 49. And the answer to that would be seven. The square root is a question, okay? That's that little weird symbol right there. If you've never seen it before, that's the square root symbol. I'm gonna show you that on the Desmos calculator in a moment. Um, but that square root is asking a question, is asking, you know, what number times itself is gonna get you a 49, right? Whatever number is under that radical symbol, the radical symbol is the square root symbol. That's another name for it. So whatever number is under that radical symbol, um, it's asking you the question, what whole number times itself is gonna get you a 49? And we know that that's seven, so the answer would be seven, right? So these are all perfect square roots. Well, remember, perfect square roots are rational numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, all of these are rational. You can turn these into fractions just by placing them over one, right? 36 in fraction form, for instance, is, oh, excuse me, not 36, the square root of 36, which is six, 
that's just six over one, right? In fraction form. So these are all going to be plain old rational numbers. So how do we identify if it's a non perfect square roots? And what I tell students is to just think about all the numbers in between the perfect square roots. So if we were to take our um, pen here and just take, oops, is it not working? Pen, okay. And take our pen, oh, it's, it's still not working. I'm having pen issues. Let's try changing the color. Maybe I didn't have it on there. There we go. If I were to take all these square roots and just draw like a little shape around it just to put them all in one category here. Okay. Now, these are all the perfect squares. So these are all the rational ones. But what about the square root of two? Or the square root of three? Or the square root of five? The square root of six, the square root of seven, and the square root of nine, or sorry, eight, not nine, nine's up there. Okay, so if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm finding numbers in between the one and four. Okay, if the square root of one is perfect, and the square root of four is perfect, then all these numbers in between one and four, the square roots of those will not be perfect. Okay, same with between four and nine. Five, six, seven, and eight are the numbers in between the perfect squares four and nine. So those are going to be non-perfect. And the way you can tell these in your calculator, let's switch real quick over to the Desmos calculator. Desmos calculator we're gonna use quite a bit in the classroom. It's an online calculator. We're using the scientific calculator, <clears throat> excuse me. So if I were to put, there's the square root symbol right there. If I were to put this square root symbol in and put a 16, it's giving me the answer for perfect square. Anytime you have a perfect square, you're gonna get a whole number in that answer spot, right? But notice when I change that to 17, what happens? It turns it into a decimal because all non-perfect square roots are decimals that go on forever and they never repeat. And those are irrational numbers, non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. And every single non-perfect square root is going to give you a decimal. Square root of three, we talked about that, decimal. Square root of four, remember, was a perfect square, two times two. So that's not, that's rational. But then the square root of five, notice it's a decimal. It's irrational. So that's kind of how you can tell if a square root is perfect or not. Stick it in your calculator. If it gives you a decimal, then you know it's irrational, okay? So let's recap what we've learned, and I'm trying to make the videos a little bit shorter so we can get through them a little faster. Um, and what we've learned today um, is to remember that all rational numbers are represented as non-terminating and non-repeating decimals that you cannot turn into fractions, okay? You can get close though, you can get really close. Like for instance, pi, is the same, like for instance, pi is 22, let me write this down here. Pi um, is 3.14. And you can, you can say that it's about 22 over seven. Like if I were to convert that into a, a fraction, I would get close to 22 over seven, but I would not get exactly 22 over seven. So again, you could turn an irrational number into a fraction that's close, but you can't turn it into an exact fraction that represents that quantity. That's why it's irrational, it just keeps going and going and going. So it's kind of impossible without rounding it to turn it into a fraction. Once it's rounded, it's no longer irrational because you can turn rounded and terminating decimals into fractions anytime. Um, okay, so. Uh, the next thing is to study the three kinds of irrational numbers and know how to identify them. Non-perfect uh, square roots was one of them. Pi was another one of them. And the other one is just plain old non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Remember that all the other numbers besides those three are rational. So they're just plain old rational numbers. If somebody gives you a fraction, you know it's rational. If somebody gives you a number two, it's rational. If somebody gives you a term, a terminating decimal, a decimal that ends, rational.
okay? And then all repeating decimals are rational. Do not forget about that because a lot of kids think, well, if it goes on for infinity, it's irrational. No, only the ones that go on for infinity that don't repeat are irrational. Repeating decimals are rational. So that sums it up for today's lesson on rational versus irrational numbers and how to identify them. And hopefully you learned a thing or two and I appreciate you growing in mathematics with me. So we'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to uh, recommend the next video that you watch is how to turn a fraction into a decimal and how to turn decimals into fractions. And um, remember, I just made a mistake. <laughs> uh, remember that um, that you too can do mathematics. So just don't give up and keep trying and eventually you'll get there. See you next time. Bye.